Oh, nice. That looks a brand new body. Nice. So, put this in the soft jaws here. And as a precaution, just because it's brand new, I like to blow it out with some air as well. Go ahead and pop these on. All right, so now that we got the body hooked up to the canister, next thing to do is to bleed the fluid. So we have this little rod over here, connects to the bottom of the divider piston, and uh, using my body weight, I'll go ahead and bleed this. And I top off the fluid just so that we don't get any more air inside there. So we go all the way to the top. I'll do just three to four times. Good workout. All right, looks to be blood. All right, after this, sure valve goes back on. All right, so uh, now that we got this blood, I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize this just so that we can have some pressure going against the piston rod when I go and bleed the piston rod. So, get the shredder on. Nitrogen, or you can use air for this portion just to give uh, the fluid some pressure. All right, that's set. Now that we're doing a conversion on this one, we're gonna have to look at this old uh, piston rod. And we're going to have to disassemble just this piston rod. And if you come here a little closely, this uh, rebound is pretty messed up on here. I'm gonna assume that uh, the top of this was is unthreading. So once I disassemble this, I will go ahead and clean the threads off and put some red lock tight, make sure it's super tight because this rebound rod's going out that way. That's why it's, it's seized right here. To explain a little bit about how rebound works, when you turn this knob over here, so as you can tell, I'm turning the rebound knob right here. Usually there'd be a pin right here. And as you rotate it, this uh, nut, I guess you could call it, this nut will move up and down and that'll reveal these holes, the bleed off holes that allow you to adjust your rebound. And that's all controlled by this little rod that is connected to rebound controller. So, pull this out. And you can tell how it kind of uh, rotates this just by fitting in those grooves. So I'm gonna pop the rebound rod out, like so. Try to spin it off more. And there's actually, if there's other fluid leaking out of your rebound rod or of, of the top of your piston rod, most likely this little O-ring has failed because this is the only thing keeping pressure and fluid from shooting through the top of your piston rod. Grab a little 13 mil. And these little uh, indentations or little holes is what the little click ball clicks into. So that gives you your click on your rebound. And that gives you your adjustment right there. So the reason why we're taking all this off is first off, the rebound wasn't really working. And because we're switching to a new style body, I'm going to replace this piston with a larger diameter piston. It is right here. And this is all to retrofit the old style prehistoric shocks to the newer style 44 mils. If I can get this open. And this is a new style piston. Now I'll show you the differences as soon as I get this off. And also one thing to note also is the direction that the piston is facing. You definitely want it to go the right way or else you're gonna have no 
rebound pretty much or it's just gonna be super stiff because the fluid has to flow in one certain way so pop 13 mil off This will slide off over there. And I like to keep a bin underneath here just in case I drop anything. It's all in one bin. Now let's crank this down because this is usually on here pretty tight. All right. I pop that off. I'm gonna grab just some kind of rod so that I don't lose track of where these shims go. Now it comes off. And this is the whole shim stack over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the front shims back on while we're removing one of the, these are, the top shims are called spacers. They're just there to take up the slack, I guess. I'm gonna remove one front because I know I did on the last one. So I'm gonna try it out with that. All right. So here's the old style piston. New style, obviously in different size. That's why we're changing it. You gotta make sure it's going the right way because uh, on your rebound, all the fluid's gonna be wanting to flow this way and uh, the fluid's gonna come in through here and make its way into the big main hole and then it's gonna bleed off through all these little tiny holes over here. So actually, while I have all this stuff off, I'm going to take the time to just blow all the holes out with some air to make sure they're super clean. I want to make sure that this the main hole over here lines up with uh, the holes on the inside of the piston over here. So I'm just gonna take my little flashlight and slide this on and look through the hole on the top and make sure that it lines up and it lines up. I mean, I'm using the old shims. This thing is, uh, this damper was already valve for the specific car that it's going on to. And I don't want to change the shims because that will just change how it's valved. Nothing wrong with these shims at all. If, if there's one that was bent while I was looking in here, I would replace that shim. In terms of replacing the shim, it's pretty easy. You just got to measure it with a caliper and see what the diameter is as well as the thickness. And I already know because I did the other one that I have to remove two of the spacers in the rear so that I have the correct amount of preload. Perfect. I'm going to tighten this up. That's tight. Next thing, throw this puppy back on. Good enough. And we're going to go back here. And I, if I'm doing all this, I like to go in here and make sure there's no major grooving between the uh, slots, I guess, because if there's any grooving over there, you're not going to get a good click um, when you're adjusting your rebound. And nothing's more satisfying than a good click on your rebound. Right. Tighten this up, but don't tighten it too tight because it's just brass. Spins freely, everything's good. Now, I'm going to go clean off the rebound rod we are going to have to fix this rebound rod. So what I was talking about earlier, because this rod overextended and the check ball moved out of place, see on the top of the rebound, it's actually threaded up here. So I have to go ahead and tighten that all the way down. There should not be any threads exposed. So on the rebound rod, I'm gonna go ahead and change out the O-rings while I'm here. There's one O-ring. Slide up the rod and this goes right here. Okay, now that we got the o-ring on here i'm gonna put the end of the rebound adjustment back on and to remember to put in that little check ball there's a spring that goes behind it make sure the hole lines up pop this little roll pin in here this one's a little bit difficult you got to push this on and make sure it lines up while hitting it with the so next step before we go ahead and put the piston rod in is we're going to grab some stainless steel polish and I'm going to polish the rod with uh, this pad over here. Yes. Okay. 
So I got the piston rod all cleaned over here. I'm gonna grab myself a tough one. And the tough one's gonna go around the piston rod just like that. So coming in here. It's gonna squirt at me. My squirt. There we are. The little push this down hard. Pull it up a few times, and that's how we bleed it. Make sure there's no air. All right, that's blood. I'm gonna to top it off with a little extra fluid, just so that I can make sure that there's no room for air. Using this tool. Here, we have a new guide over here, because uh, for the new body, we need a different size guide. This has a Merkel seal already in it. And we always replace the Merkel seal again, like what I was saying, the pretty much the most important seal, I would say. So I'll just slide this on. And I'm gonna push this down all the way until it touches fluid. Now it's at the O-ring. So I'm gonna let out the pressure so I can push this down. Good enough. Now we can push it all the way down and throw in the retaining ring. Retaining ring goes after the seal. Now that the clip's in, go ahead and charge it with nitrogen. And then I like to check just by pushing down to make sure we have no air bu bubbles. Yep, that's not going anywhere. All right, wipe this up. I grab some uh, cleaner, get the oil out of here. So we got a dust shield over here, has a dust wiper on it, just keeps dust from going to the shock from the piston rod. Pop this on here and we can turn it by hand until it gets to the bottom. I like to grab one of these just to hold it down, turn it. Then I'm gonna pull down on it, tighten it all the way. All right, now that we got the shock done, we're gonna go ahead and get the other one assembled. And then after that, we are going to head over to the dyno and we'll see how these do. All right, so we're at the dyno right now. Uh, I got the shock uh, put inside the dyno. So pretty much how this works is uh, there's a sensor up top over here and that will measure the force being pushed against it and pulled. So that's how you can test your compression and your rebound strokes. And then all we're gonna do right now is pretty much make sure there's no issues because if there's an issue with the, the damper, you'll see it right on the dyno. And what we have here is uh, the dyno graph from the other damper because I already did that damper so that I can go ahead and match this one to the other damper so that they're perfect on each side. First off, I'm going to start off with a gas test just to make sure that we have adequate pressure in here. Alright, so we got 109 foot-pounds of gas pressure, so we're all good. So coming to the top of the canister over here, Gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of anti-seize. That should be good. And I put that there just to uh, make sure the check ball in here doesn't get rusty or you know get seized up. Okay, so I got the top of the compression knob over here. I threw a little bit of anti-seize just so I can stick the check ball right there on the spring. So what I'm going to do is just pop this on wherever, make sure it clicks right. And right now, because I have to adjust this, I'm just going to put this in a random position so I can turn it. So I'm just going to tighten this compression knob to the stem. All right, so I'm going to go to six inches a second. And I go to six inches a second because it's a good speed that you can kind of see everything at. 
So what I'm looking for right now is when I tested the other damper, I put it on uh, put it on a click 10. So I'm going to find where a click 10 is on this damper as well and match it up. So I got to make sure my rebound is consistent. So I put the other one on click eight. I'll put this one on click eight as well. So as we can see right now, it's really soft. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to stiffen it up. So I get to click 10, or what click 10 would be. And then once you get to these consistent, bigger um, increases in compression, that's when you know that you're in the adjustment range. Right there. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and try to match it up to the other dynagraph so that I know I'm at click 10. Alright, so that's going to be click 10. I'm going to hold this here. Okay, so as you can see, I got these pretty much matched up on the dyno. So this is rebound and that's compression up there. So I loosen the knob so I can go ahead and start off at click 1. And then I'll count back to click 10, so I know it's at click 10. So I'm going to click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And keep it there. Tighten it down. And we're done matching it for now. I'm going to run a PVP now. And what that does is it tests the shock through pretty much all different um, velocities, which is like, and that's measured in inches per second. And in here, pretty much I'll just note what click it's on. So it's, um, this will be shock B, because we already did shock A. And I'm gonna put eight, 10, 250. So that means on the rebound, it's click eight. And on compression, it's click 10, 250 is the gas pressure. All right, so we just ran a PVP here. And you can see on the graph, we have side-by-sides or overlays of each damper. And they are pretty much spot on. So there you go. Now both dampers are matched up perfectly and they're ready to go. All right, thanks for watching. If you guys got any questions, feel free to put comments in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Have a good day. Bye.